Hey everybody, it's Miss Susan from the Madison Public Library, and thank you for joining me for episode four of the Every Child Ready to Read program. I'm really excited about this one because in this one, we're actually going to be talking about reading to your child, having your child read to you, and how that should work. One of the things that I'm gonna share with you is that we as adults, I know as a mother of three, spend a lot of our time reading the book to our children and our children listen to us tell the story. Well, I wanna share with you a different way on how I want you to sit down and read together with your child. So give me a minute, let me turn my camera around onto my screen, I'm gonna share some information with you and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. No matter what your child's age, reading together or shared reading is the single most important activity that you can do to help your child get ready to read. Shared reading is valuable because your child has your full attention and you are enjoying the experience together. Shared reading helps a child develop a love of reading and an appreciation of books. Children who enjoy being read to are more likely to want to learn to read themselves. A child's interest in reading is an important predictor of later reading achievement. Reading together and talking about what you read increases children's vocabulary and background knowledge, helps children learn how books work and how written language looks, gives them an understanding of how stories are organized, that they have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and encourages imaginative thinking. Now remember how learning vocabulary is something that begins at birth and continues throughout school. Shared reading is one of the best ways to help children learn vocabulary. Knowing more words helps children learn to read more easily. Children learn more new words from shared reading. Books can teach less common words, words that children might not hear in everyday conversation. Reading is the best way to introduce these rarer or less common words. Make sure you stop and take time to explain what the words mean Children who have longer, larger vocabularies are more likely to become better readers. Many times when books are shared, the parents read and the child listens, but children learn best when they are actively involved. I'm gonna show you a short clip of me sharing with you how you can do shared reading with your child. Let me turn my camera around to myself and my book and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so many times when a parent reads a book to their child, we as a parent are reading the story and the child is sitting there listening. But I wanna give you some examples on how we could do shared reading, like, like what I've shown in the PowerPoint presentation. So I'm gonna use the book, The Little Red Hen, written by Byron Barton as an example. So. One of the first ways that you can do shared reading with your child is have your child take a look at the cover and explain what they see on the cover. Ask them, what's the animal? Well, that looks like a chicken or a hen. And there's her baby chick. And then just let your child just point out different parts of the book um, on the cover. And then you can go ahead and start reading. As you're reading, especially a book like this, have your child participate. Ask them, what's this animal? And if your child is too young and if they don't know, go ahead and help them. Say, this is a pig, duck, a cat, and a hen, and her baby chick. As you continue to read this story, especially this story, it's gonna have, uh, when the hen asks her three friends for some help, the common phrase is gonna be, not I, squealed the pig, not I, quacked the duck, and that I meow the cat. So since we as adults know that this is gonna be the same throughout the story, when you get to that part again, ask your child. So before it, it says, then that little red hen asked her three friends, who will help me cut these stalks of wheat? Well, ask the child, well, what do you think the cat would say? Not I. What do you think the duck would say? Not I. And what do you think the pig would say? Not I. And then just explain, no, it looks like her friends don't want to help. So 
Those are called predicting, having your child to predict what are the people going to say. The same thing as you get to the end of the story too, asking your child, what do you think is going to happen next? When you're asking your child a question, ask an open-ended question, something where they can give you more than just a yes or no as an answer. So talk with your child as you're reading the story. That's a part of shared reading. The last thing is to expand on what your child is learning. If your child says something, expand on it. If they say a word incorrectly, let them know what the correct word is. Have your child talk. This is where that talking part that we've talked about a couple episodes ago really comes in handy. You're talking to your child and your child is talking back, answering your questions and sharing their thoughts and feelings about what's going on in the book. So that's just a simple example of shared reading. Well, hey, everybody. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you again for joining me for episode four of the Every Child Ready to Read program. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at our website, I've left a link in the description below. Just click on it. If you've missed episodes one, two, and three, you'll be able to find them there. And you'll also get information about our Rubber Ducky Club, which will give you different types of activities so that you can practice with your child some of the early literacy skills that I've been sharing with you during these videos. And also, you'll be able to see the link to our latest website from our library called Good Books for Kids and Teens. And on the page for babies and toddlers and preschoolers, I have a whole list of books for you that are appropriate to start working with your child. Now, if you don't live here in Madison, Illinois, don't worry about it. Take a look at that list anyway. Most of the books on that list are pretty common books, so you can call your local library and ask them to see if they can hold the books for you so you can practice some of these fun early literacy skills that I'm sharing with you today. Well, my name is Miss Susan from the Matson Area Public Library. I want to thank you for joining me. Stay tuned for episode five and have a great day. Bye.